whenever you are oh sorry if you want i can repeat it <laughs> if that's okay you are your best future collaborator when you undergo uh, research activities for example you sometimes have to express what is your methodology do some analysis and you should sometimes repeat them so having this in an open space and well delivered and well written would be like really really well documented sorry it could really help to accelerate reproducibility not only for you but others that could also do it and you never lose access in case you change computers for example if you have those protocols and documentations out on the open in the cloud also to give and get credit sometimes you work on groups and you do some part of the job sometimes you actually take some information and some documents that other people have used for example in these presentations i have implemented some um, pictures and information taken from the nasa top science 101 curriculum and i have credited them by putting the link to where i took it from and that this idea of giving credit and getting credit actually strengthens the scientific community. And it's also like a, a nod that we are sharing these values of making this open and giving credit to whom it belongs. And there have been also um, information that have shown that sharing your knowledge can increase your visibility and impact of the science that you do. So it can increase the citations, which are not only of the research papers that for those who are not in the uh, academic atmosphere, when researchers do science, they usually share it through some uh, scientific documentations that are then put in some um, journals. And these have a citation. So there, there is like an identifier for which you can citate it. But you can cite other things as well. You can put some code in the open. You can put data on the open. Even these slides can be cited if I wanted to or you wanted to. So to expand the knowledge that it's not just research and scientists, many things can be shared. And I believe in the curriculum, you will see it in depth afterwards in other um, meetings. And also it can increase the collaborations you make across each other, for example. Now you're meeting a lot of people from everywhere that maybe have ideas or experiences that can be useful for you. And, and you can use things, um, for example, to collaborate between disciplines. And that's the example I wanted, like, for example, to, to share. A concrete example, like Samira asked, I think they are really, really awesome. So you can understand what you're saying. For example, I am a marine biologist, but I had the opportunity to work collaboratively open with some oceanographers, which are the ones who understand how the ocean moves and how it works. And we were able to use some satellite data that was taken from NASA and to collaboratively work between myself and my team, which were biologists, to see, for example, how temperature in a special water site uh, was related to how some fish grew. And that's something that we couldn't have done if we weren't open to work openly and collaboratively, for example. But there's not only benefits to you, of course, the science in general also benefits from open science practices. It makes science more transparent, reproducible, and more accurate. And it allows for others to check methods and results and maybe even find you and correct some errors in case you haven't noticed. It also improves the scientific literature because it mitigates some publication bias and improves also this trustworthiness. The idea that sometimes people or other scientists don't know what you are doing or how you are getting to the results you are getting. And this is something that's really important and open science come here to tackle this. And why not? It could also lead to more discoveries. It, there are proofs that collective knowledge can accelerate scientific discovery and is more effective than individual efforts. 
And actually there was this example of how a solar and heliospheric observatory, this Soho, uh, that was used especially at the beginning to see how the sun worked. Uh, many planetary scientists found that it could also be used for its ability to spot comets, which wasn't like an intended use at the beginning. But it turned out that by sharing this openly, others could use this tool in another way. So this is also something really awesome. And last but not least, and actually I believe this is like the most important thing, is how open science benefits society. So it increases public trust and understanding, which I said before, I think is one of the keystones that we should tackle as scientists that want to apply open science. This idea of involving citizens and also known experts in the research process, it's key. It also makes science more efficient since data can have anticipated uses and you can avoid repeating, for example, some research studies that have already been done in case you can find information that this has been done. It also attracts a diverse set of participants, maximizing diversity, which is also key in trying to tackle new and unforeseen challenges. And it can accelerate the pace of time thanks to including ideas from this broader community that has been attracted. And a very good, um, a very good uh, example of this was the rapid response to the current COVID-19 pandemic in which academic publishers committed to open access and many results were shared and many um, trials of, vaccine, of vaccines were also shared. And this accelerated the distribution of actual, actionable information. So this is like a real concrete example of how, for example, open science can benefit society. And having that said, if in case you want to know more, of course, uh, you can ask for questions in the document, in the Slack of OLSA. You can also access the full NASA TOPS Open Science 101 curriculum, which has many more examples in case you want. There is this handbook to reproducible ethical and collaborative data science from an amazing community of practice that is the Turing Way. And please, I invite you all to explore and to look for yourself what is useful for you. This is uh, a really, really important way to learn for you to explore. And having said that said, we have arrived to the last of the exercises. I think we have some five minutes or maybe not. Yes, okay, this exercise is thing more for you and for your project. So in case you don't finish it in the next eight minutes, five minutes, don't worry. Maybe you can chat it afterwards with your mentor. But we thought it was really important for you to think how could your career, science and or society benefit from integrating open science into your project. You're all here because you want to apply this open science practices and we invite you, we wanted to invite you to think of how your project can benefit one or many of the participants and groups we have been talking about. So we have space in the shared document. I don't, I, I'm sorry, I cannot see the line, <laughs> the number, but people are yes. already writing. Yeah, it's line um, 166 and people are already writing. The link is also in the chat. Um... Great, I will leave this prompt for a few minutes in case someone wants to write it down on their notebooks or anywhere else. And the slides are available for everyone to come back and check it out. And of course, if you have any suggestions or even more examples about the different things we've been talking, more than happy to include them.
Oh, even you is participating. <laughs> Yeah, I can see very different answers um, from increasing the rate of accepting or adapting uh, to a new product. Um, also, people are, are sharing that um, we want to bring innovative digital tools to help researchers manage data overflow and facilitate more collaboration across all research data sets. Um, Joe is sharing that open data meant um, you have something to work on when you were an open source research software engineer. Um, so other people give data for free. Um, yeah, improving the quality of your work. Um, other answers are the scientific results, whether a product or fundamental ideas um, get shared. Those are, yeah, all the topics. Um, where open science can, can help you, can benefit you. Um, yeah, so we have five minutes left. Virginia, do you want right. to have anything else to tell us? Just wanted to thank you to feel free to reach out. And that, of course, this is like just like a really small introduction to what open science is. And throughout all this program, you will be looking even further on each of these things that we have mentioned today. So feel free to ask anyone if the Slack and welcome. So I will exit my, I will stop sharing now and yeah. thank you very much. Thank you so much, Virginia. Um, can we give Virginia a round of applause, please? Um, she's been our first expert and you will get to work with her um, uh, in some coaching sessions for some of their projects. So that's also really, really exciting. So I have only uh, some few announcements to make before we wrap up the call. Um, so please make sure that all of you are in our, uh, in our mailing list in the Slack channel. That's where we share information more quickly. And um, that you have also received the calendar invitations. If you haven't, please write an email to me. Um, you can reply to the acceptance email and I will answer you, I get back to you. So I see a question in the chat whether cohort goals are mandatory. They are not mandatory, they are very encouraged. So we do expect that you at least can join one of them. So we will have one on Tuesday, another on Thursday. And we do hope that you, like, we can get to see you and hear all about your projects and your experiences. So please try to attend at least one each week. We understand that um, maybe you have some time constraints and that's okay. If you miss one of the calls, we will share the recording as soon as it is processed and upload it to our YouTube channel. Uh, and optionally, we will hold open office hours on Wednesdays same hours at, uh, at the call, and on Fridays as well. Uh, Fridays is early. Um, I think it's at 5, no, that's 11 UTC, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, will, <laughs> we will share the information on the Slack channel. Those are um, the spaces for you to come with questions if you want to chat with the OLS team. Uh, sometimes um, some experts might join, um, some regularly join. So you're welcome to come, ask questions, uh, come chat. Um, really is a space for, for you to have um, just more time to talk to us. And again, you will receive an email um, meeting your, to introduce you to your coach. Um, and I see you. I see Heba, do you have a question? Yes, I have one question and one thing that makes me happy. Uh, I need to say hi to my friend Vivian. I just saw her picture now. Uh, we were <laughs> gathering in Paulo in Brazil last July. So this is an amazing opportunity to, to meet you again. We actually met there physically from Egypt to uh, to Brazil to meet her 
in science yeah. diplomacy course. So this is a good opportunity <laughs> now. Uh, missed you a lot, Miss Sao Paulo. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> my second question is: um, Should we um, do a, a WhatsApp group to gather um, um, as a colleagues to 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 post any questions after uh, 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 doing our lectures? Something. Uh, the question is the, for the coordinators. We could prefer to keep the communication in the Slack channel. That is the space that OLS maintains, and we are very active there. So uh, if you have received the invitation, I uh, encourage you to uh, keep an eye on that. That's a, a really big active space for our, all of the OLS community. So that would be the best way to keep in touch with everyone here, but also, um, I, as I said in the beginning, the community is is very big, very active. Not everyone is in this program. And so that could be the best way to keep in touch, to get to know one okay. another, to ask okay. questions, share resources. Like really, it's a very active space and we would prefer to keep it um, open to everyone as well. Thank you again. And thank you for this, this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Um, again, like any, uh, I'm gonna, Take a look at the chat for other like logistic questions of people who didn't receive the link. And I will double check that you're on our mailing links, mailing lists. Um, but other than that, I think this is the end of our call. So again, I'm, I'm so happy that you are all able to join. If you have any feedback for um, the organizing, the organization or us, you can leave it um, at the bottom of the etherpad, you can tell us what you liked, what you didn't like, and we will use um, that information to organize better cohort calls for the rest of, of the program. So again, like um, I'm gonna stop the recording now.